So Ardova PLC, a leading indigenous energy firm, has completed the full acquisition of Enyo Retail and Supply Limited. According to the recent notice, Dambic IBTC Capital Limited and Banwoy Godalo advised Ardova while Rand Merchant Bank and Herbert Smith Free Hills Paris LLP acted as financial and legal advisors respectively to Enyo. Still on Ardova, the company has announced the successful issuance of a tranche A and tranche B series one bond worth up to 25.3 billion naira. The issuance is part of the company's newly established 60 billion uh, bond issuance program. Here to discuss uh, the deals and also the downstream structure is the CEO of Ardova PLC, Mr. Olumide Adeoshri. You're very welcome, sir. Good Thank morning. You. Thanks for joining us. So, uh, congrats. Uh, as far as the strategy behind the acquisition of NU, can you, can you share, on, share with us what that was about? Um, so, um, Ardova, as you know, is a household brand. It's been around for 60 odd years. Uh, it's a great brand. It's a household name. Uh, we have 450 retail stations. We have a huge uh, support backbone. So we have a tank. We have a tank farm. We have terminals. And for us, we wanted to really grow the economies of scale that we enjoy as a business. Enyo represents everything that we kind of didn't have. It was. It's a new brand. It has a, a large portfolio of company-owned, company-operated stations, which are the most profitable channels. And uh, it didn't have a. It doesn't have a supply backbone. So. That's one. The second piece of the strategic rationale is really around Enyo's technology focus. Enyo has built a strong systems under Yemi, uh, under Yomi, with uh, a strong technology backbone, retail applications, retail tech. The two together means that we're able to distribute fuels through more profitable channels using the best uh, in class technology. So it's really something that uh, that we're, we're we're quite excited about, and Let's we think stop. we can extract a lot of value from. There, there was another uh, acquisition. I think it was uh, Rain Oil. Yeah, the sixty-one percent equity yeah. uh, stake acquisition of Eterna. Um, you know, what's in the water? It's <laughs> as far as all these deals taking place. Yeah, I'm trying not to smile because my CFO reminded me when we were signing for the um, for the acquisition that it, we borrowed money. So don't smile when you're, when you're <laughs> right, talking. It's a debt. Right. We have to pay it back. Yeah. No, I think what we're seeing is what we've always expected to happen. It's a consolidation of the industry. Um, the last time I was here, I cited a, a, a stat for you that there are 30,000 retail stations in Nigeria. 3,000 mm. 3, of them are run by Moman, which means Major Oil Marketers Association of Nigeria, the household brands, mm. which means that you have a large 27,000 portfolio of fragmented stations. What you're seeing now is that everybody understands that you need a system of supply for economies of scale. So if you have a depot, it's really important that you have a retail leg to, uh, to push it through. So I think we're going to see a lot more consolidation. It's been happening for a while now. Uh, before us, I think Mobile uh, yeah. Nipco did that deal. So we're going to see more of that. And I think that's the general direction of travel for the industry. Great stuff. Um, for, for you and the increased uh, retail presence with this um, taking over venue now, does it help to have an increased presence with the uh, Dangote refinery coming on stream in the near future? Absolutely. Um, if I was a refiner, um, I would prioritize my my customers. Uh, I, would, I would apply the Pareto principle, meaning that 80% of my business will probably come from 20% of my customers. I would look for players that have the scale to be able to move products down uh, downstream retail, particularly if I have no interest in participating in that space. And so it's really the organized uh, corporates that have that capacity, that have the integrated system from depot, marine vessels, uh, retail stations, terminals, really to push it down from coast to pump. Mm. So I think from a, from, a, from a focus and from a scalability perspective, it's certainly something that, we're, that we've looked at and it's part, of the, it's part of our strategy. Great stuff. Speaking of strategy, yeah. I mean, profit margins in the downstream sector, a bit, bit on the slim side. Yes. Um, you've got the NMPC being the major importer of, the, of, the, of, uh, of refined uh, petroleum products, the most popular item, PMS, there's a heavy subsidy on that. Yeah. How, do you, how do you maneuver past all that? It's a very good question. Thank you. So first of all, I think it's important to say that uh, shareholders like my core shareholder, uh, Mr. Abdul Wasiu uh, Mr. Gabriel Ogbeche of uh, Reno, these are guys who really believe in Nigeria, right? They invest heavily in right. Nigeria against the odds. So what they're seeing, and I think what, we, what, what, what we're seeing is, is two things. One, um, the subsidy will not, will not always be here. Uh, two, it really is important to have those retail outlets do more than just retail. So one of the, um, I think one of the, I read something earlier today where, where they, we, we looked at our numbers and we said that we have 96%, uh, sorry, 86% uh, uh, cost of sales. 
Well, that's improved. It was it was ninety six percent when we took over two and a half How years ago. You make money with so that what kind you of... do is you diversify. You really okay. use those retail outlets and you do more from them. So from our side, the way we're looking at it is very simple. We have committed that by twenty twenty four. 25% of our revenue will come from cleaner or renewable energy sources. Okay. How, are we, how are we plotting our way there? We have commissioned and we're well into the construction of a 20,000 ton LPG storage facility in Ijora. We have a 16.6 .6 hectare site there. We're taking 8.8 .8 of it and we're building the largest storage facility for LPG. So we're betting, the, we're betting on LPG as a future fuel. Uh, the statistics tell us that uh, currently we do 1.5 million tons of uh, LPG as a country. The general direction of travel is that in three to five years' time, that number will rise to about 5 million tons. We want to be part of it. And the way you bring gas in economically is by bringing it in at scale. So having a large, uh, a large storage facility means that you can bring a, a very large LPG carrier to do the decanting, and then you can push some of that value down the, down the line. We're also doing a lot of work at our retail stations to, to really make them more than just fuel stations. We're mm. putting the retail back in. We're putting LPG back in. So we're building a consolidated retail business at the forecourt so that we're able to serve customers absolutely everything. And in time, fuels itself will become the lost leader. If you speak to Shell, they'll tell you they make more money selling coffee right, right at the fuel stations than they do selling fuel. Yeah. And that long term is sort of where we are hoping to get into. It's very, I'm glad you have this strategy in place for LPG because in our last segment, we we're just talking about how the governor of Delta State is saying the federal government should do something about it. I mean, cooking gas prices have just... I know, I know. 556,000 yeah, right. a ton <laughs> wholesale. It was incredible. 285 Right, right. Uh, so yeah, yeah. it's good, good to see that you have that foresight there. Yeah. Um, so on subsidies, though, yeah. any, I mean, a lot, when you, last time you were on the show, we talked about that extensively. Yeah. Any um, headway with government or? Yeah, so the conversations are, the conversations are happening. Uh, we had a very productive session with the authority, uh, Mr. Farouk Ahmed. Um, he's someone I have a lot of uh, respect for and he's someone who seems keen to drive the agenda. Uh, there has been some lag in the transition plan, which was meant to come out 60 days after. But I think we need to take a slightly longer look. This is a very difficult position for the government to take. The impact on hu the human impact of it alone is enough to cause people to pause. But it's a decision that has to be ma made in the interest of the country. Mm. We can no longer support the subsidy regime that we have. So we're expecting that within six months we'll start to see some positive steps uh, that are codified already in the act. So transition plan, and then there's six months as well to actually really get a fully bled plan. So I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic that the government will deliver on that, uh, on that agenda. And as uh, moment, so my, different, my other hat as chairman of moment, right. we will continue to work with government, collaborate, engage, communicate with them to ensure that what we're pushing out is pushed out in a scalable, sustainable way. Uh, again, in the interest of uh, in the interest of Nigerians. Fantastic. Uh, let's talk about your your, your bond issuance. Um, what, what would the, the, the proceeds uh, be used for? It suggested in the, some circles there could be some more acquisitions <laughs> down the line. So let's be very clear. We got shareholder approval for right. sixty billion, but what we went into the market for on a on a seven and ten year paper was for twenty two billion. Okay. Um, if the market's appetite is any indication. People still see that there's, there, there's still some there's still life in the downstream because mm. we came through oversubscribed. It was the largest bond uh, that a downstream company had ever uh, issued. Uh, we came in at we went in for 22. We got 27.3. We walked away with 25.3. So what that means is that there's a lot of appetite in one the industry. Uh, there's a lot of confidence in what we're planning to do with the funds, which is one, complete the acquisition of NU, two, the LPG storage facility that's already been commissioned and a lot of company funds have already been used in that. Yeah. And the third piece is really to upgrade our terminal in Ijora, modernize it, it was built by BP. Uh, we have a 30,000 ton uh, blending, lubricants blending plant there. We want, to, we want to increase the scale of it and really just generally modernize the facility, include a new safety, fire safety system. Lots of uh, interesting little things mm. that, we will, that we believe will start to deliver value uh, within the shortest possible time. Great stuff. We're hoping to have that, the plant itself completed, the storage facility completed by the end of yeah, next we, year. We, we need the break, we, we guess. We, we, <laughs> we need it. We certainly do. Is it a good interest rate environment right now to be raising debt? Um, yes. I mean, I think that uh, as long as you spend the money now, because right. I think globally we're seeing uh, what some analysts are calling hyperinflation. So it's really important that whatever... Uh, even at 12%, at 13% for Nigeria, that's, that, that's, that's good. 
Uh, and those are the levels we went into this debt with. It's a long, uh, it's a long, uh, it's a long facility. So it's patient capital, exactly the sort of capital you should be using to build capex type uh, infrastructure type plays. Mm. So we think we, we we believe this is the right time for it. Great stuff. Man. Now, are we going to go to the market and try and get six and take sixty billion? Certainly not for the uh, immediate future. Gotcha, gotcha. Yes. Um, you mentioned renewables earlier on. I really yes. wanted to get your take on everything from COP26 in Glasgow, yeah. Energy Week in Cape Town, yeah. the Intra-Africa Trade Fair in Durban, Energy, and what, what, the, what do you, what's your take on the transition for Africa as a fossil fuel dependent continent to yeah, I, I saw, um It's interesting, we, I was in, um, I was in uh, Riyadh with uh, my chairman attending the uh, Futures Investment Initiative uh, again, and it was quite interesting that we were in Riyadh, the home of, uh, of uh, oil, and for three days, nobody said a thing about oil. Wow. Right. So that, let's put that to one side. I think we think the, the, the big takeaways from, from COP26 that I could gather was this uh, 1.5 degree agreement, right? We all agreed that something's happening. And we've all agreed that we will take some time to, uh, to try and create the necessary changes so that we keep the temperature, the global warming or the temperature change to, uh, to an acceptable level. Mm. There are also plans around, uh, they also furthered the discussions around the 100 billion facility that I think the developing countries I said they were going to put down. The truth of the matter is that Africa, I mean, for most of us in Africa, we have not had an industrial <laughs> revolution. revolution. We never did that. And, and right. if we do now, it's going to be powered by cleaner fuels. But we must be given the opportunity to really maximize some of the resources that we have. Focus less on crude, focus more on gas, clean. And I think that there must be, uh, there must be an outcome that works for African countries, that works for Nigeria, that also allows us to still meet some of the targets, very ambitious targets, I might uh, hasten to add around uh, a transition by 2050, 2060, 2070, as some countries have agreed to. But in Nigeria, I think the way we've got to look at it is we've got to dimension it. Uh, the future of renewables will happen in two places. There's mobility, cars, fuels for cars, and then there's fuel for power. I think what we're going to see is we're going to see a lot of traction in fuel for power. It's already happening. The diesel business is being cannibalized daily by the slow conversion that people are moving into gas, people are moving into uh, uh, gas mainly and solar. For mobility, it'll catalyze over a longer period of time because we're not going to see the, uh, the uptick in, uh, in EVs, electric vehicles, as uh, we're seeing in some of the major economies. Yep. It'll, happen at the, it'll happen at the luxury car range, but we will also see some catalysm at the, at the keke level, right? They're, 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 I mean, China, the advancements they're making in electric bikes right now is immense. Now, you can imagine when you remove subsidy in a place like Nigeria, then you will really kind of force, any, force a change which is part of what the government's initiative around CNG, around LPG is about. Mm. So I think we're going to see things happen at a slightly different pace, but it's inevitable. And I think we just need to orient ourselves towards it. Is it practical, the expectations from the West on, uh, because you've heard all the talks, in fact, yeah. OPEC, some have pushed back saying, look, Africa has to have its investments in fossil fuels. So is, that, is it a, a, the demands practical on the Africa? Demands, I think the demands are not, are not practical. Okay. I, mean, I mean, I think they're not. We have... Uh, we have the seventh largest uh, reserves of gas uh, in country. Uh, it's impossible to say that gas is, uh, you treat gas in the same uh, way you would treat, uh, you treat crude oil, for instance. We must be allowed to exercise everything, all, all, all the value that's, that, that's trapped and inherent mm -hmm. in, uh, in, uh, in, our, in our natural resources. Great stuff. Finally, only after about 30 seconds. Are you yeah. optimistic for oil and gas going into 2022? I'm very optimistic. Yeah. Um, I think some of the decisions and actions we've taken so far uh, confirm that optimism. We're quite bullish about the industry. I have absolute confidence that the government will do the right thing for the people of Nigeria. I also have total confidence that as we manage the transition from a subsidy regime to a, to a to subsidy removal to a liberalized um, our economy, we will do it in a way that really takes into account people's expectations and people's daily needs around power. Great stuff. The CEO of Adora PLC, Mr. Olumide Adyoshima, and the head of MoMA, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much.